Today, let us share God's grace with the sermon, Father's Last Request. Father came to this earth according to the prophecy of David and walked the path of the gospel for 37 years. Just before ascending to heaven, he called on the phone one last time. I was able to hear Father's voice for the last time on this earth. Father said something very simple. What we need to do above all else is to preach the gospel diligently. After awakening me to the importance of this mission, he hung up the phone. That was the last time I heard Father's voice on the earth. Father said, everything will go well from now on. Listen to Mother carefully and preach the gospel diligently. Because Father continually told us that this gospel would be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, I always kept those words in my mind. And I believed that before Father ascended to heaven, He prepared the gospel to go well as long as we worked hard. In the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. What message is always mentioned last at the end of each of these books? Preach the gospel to all nations, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. At that time, I realized that Father was giving the same message from 2,000 years ago. Now in this age, as we follow Father and Mother along the path of prophecy, we must remember the message Father gave and Mother emphasized. Go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth because there are still many sheep who are not yet in the sheep pen. Only after finding all our lost brothers and sisters by preaching the gospel to every corner of the earth can we go to heaven. That is why even now whenever I meet our brothers and sisters I cannot help but pass along Father's message. Everything has been prepared and will go well from now on. All you have to do is preach hard. Among Father's teachings, there is a teaching that says, it is better to become a good person instead of finding a good person. Of course, we should find many good people, but what Father wanted more was for all of us to become a good person. Everyone, what is the definition of a good person in the Bible? Today, let's find out through the Gospel of Luke. Let's see Luke chapter 10, verse 28. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? In other words, which of these three do you think was a good person? Verse 37, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. When looking at Luke chapter 10, while keeping Father's words in mind, it is better to become a good person instead of finding a good person. We can see what kind of person Father desires us to be the most. A Levite saw the man who fell into the hands of robbers, but passed him by. 
and a priest also passed him by. However, a Samaritan was traveling. Since he was traveling, he must have had a destination. There must have been places he needed to go. However, he did not care about his itinerary. He set aside his schedule and devoted his money and efforts to save a life. Jesus asked, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? In other words, which of these three do you think was a good person? Wouldn't we all choose the Samaritan? Because the Samaritan spared nothing to save the life of the dying man. Jesus taught, among the three, he is the best and the most righteous person. Jesus said, do likewise. Everyone, among many principles in this world, let us take a look at the role of numbers. What number always equals zero, even if it is multiplied by a large number? It is zero. Zero is always zero. Even if it is multiplied by one, ten, or one thousand, even if you multiply it by one hundred million, it is still zero. And even if you multiply it by one billion, it is still zero. For a number to have a positive value, what needs to change? Everyone, let us regard the number zero as us and the numbers that were multiplied as our circumstances. Some are in a circumstance called one, and some in a circumstance called 100, and others in very good circumstances called 1,000 or 10,000. However, if you are like the number zero, no matter how good the circumstance is, can you bring about a good result? If you are a zero, no matter how good your condition is, you cannot produce anything other than zero. Then what should we do in this circumstance? What should change to make our good circumstance meaningful? Shouldn't I, the number zero, change? No matter how good the surrounding conditions given by God's grace are, unless we become a new creation, being reborn and changed, we can never produce beautiful results. This is why Jesus said, do likewise. All mankind is destined to die. We were angels who sinned in heaven and were expelled to this earth. We should think, if I leave these souls alone, they will all die. How can I save them? Everyone, there are many Zion family members who have escaped from the life of a number zero. If a zero can be reborn, renewed, and changed into at least the number one, the number 10,000 can have the numerical value of 10,000. 100 million can have a value of 100 million. What if we become a 2 or a 5 instead of a 1? Won't we have even greater results? As a result of us continually being reborn and becoming greater vessels, many souls around us began to return to God. We kept changing into people God desires, those who resemble God. In Luke chapter 10, while traveling, the Samaritan was faced with a very unique situation. Actually, the Samaritan was just a traveler who had nothing to do with the dying man. He could have continued his trip toward his destination. However, he did not ignore the dying man. He knew that the man would die if he left him alone. The same is true of people around us. From a spiritual perspective, the people around us are souls who will die if left alone. 
Like this light, Father ran all the electrical wires and even connected the service truck between the house and the utility pole. After doing everything, he told us just to turn on the switch. Once we turned on the switch, the light shone brightly. Father made everything possible to turn the world of darkness into the world of the light. He made everything easy for us. God paved the path so that all Zion members could work hard only for the gospel. Although Father prepared everything, the gospel is not done automatically. What I really want to convey is that we must change. Let us see Luke chapter 19, verse 12. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money, in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you, because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. In this parable of the minas, one man received one mina and earned ten more, and another man received one mina and earned five more. With zero as our original number, we cannot make a greater value no matter what number we're combined with. However, there were people who changed what they originally had into ten or five minas. How were they able to change? It was possible because they were born again. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, You can never see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. Now is the time to change. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it is written, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2 Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but what should we be? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We should not be the same today as we were yesterday. We should resemble God more today than yesterday, and even more tomorrow, and even more the day after tomorrow. Then, you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What is God's pleasing will? God wants us to be a good person, just as we saw in Luke chapter 10 a moment ago. God does not want us to be like the Levite or the priest who left the dying man alone. God told us to be like the Samaritan who made efforts to care for and save dying souls. 
Did not Jesus clearly say, do likewise? In Romans chapter 12, God told us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, and said, this is your spiritual act of worship. Our value must not remain at zero as it was yesterday, but it should change into one, and from one into two, and then into three. If our number becomes 100, isn't it easy to become 1,000 or 10,000? No matter what conditions and circumstances surround us. Today, I think of Father's words once again. It is better to become a good person first instead of finding a good person. Like the Good Samaritan, let us be good people who take pity on 7.7 .7 billion people in the global village and lead them to repentance by preaching the new covenant diligently so that they can receive salvation. I hope that we will be able to live this kind of gracious and beautiful life. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.